And I'm gonna do the customary. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Can you guys do that? Yeah. Okay. Okay, now reverse. Oh, oh. Oh, I no, mess I up my hair. That. Yeah, me too. No, don't, don't mess around. <laughs> this is Whiskey Fireside Shut. What number is this? Whiskey Fireside Shut number 55, I think? Oh. We got the fire going? Are you sure it's not like number 200? I don't have that much of a problem, okay? <laughs> I'm excited! Look who I have! Hey guys! Hey everyone! <laughs> this is great! Well, we got a fire. I thought, you know, these outdoor people would actually mm -hmm. have a fire, like maybe even live in the woods somewhere, but no, we had to <laughs> go into some, some, you know, like there's houses all around us. in the suburbs oh my lord they're like normal people for heaven's sakes this is crazy all right so we basically uh we have the fire going lovely and um whiskey fire and cane glen vintage so we have two fires Ooh. yes because this yes. will warm you inside fire. it actually says it, it actually is smoky whiskey delicious <coughs> there you go you don't like whiskey do you <sighs> no this is exciting this is all right exciting. cheers Look. cheers Oh my lord. I'm huge fans of these people. Uh, Chris and Julia, they have the Chris, 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 YouTube. I got a few questions for you. The first one, okay, okay before YouTube, and actually, like, YouTube is not your normal job. No. 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 Okay. But you do film. Yes. That's yeah. why she's really good at it. It's going to be beautiful. She you guys are about to see right now. <laughs> you actually film professionally. Yes. We could tell. She's really good at what she does. Ooh. <laughs> so, yeah, so if you spend all your days filming, Yes. And then you spend the weekends and your holidays going off filming. Yes. Why would you do that? Oh, because I, I absolutely love it. I, I would say that I am borderline clinically addicted to filming. Uh, and, I, and I say that happily. Uh, so I would film to my heart's content all the time if I could. So. Really? Okay. So, so Julia, Which... you, you don't film. <laughs> well, not well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it seems to me like we see more of you in the film than the film person. Yes. Yes. Yes, I uh, pointed someone towards our videos to be like, this is this is what my wife looks like. And the guy was like, for the first half of the video, I was trying to see if there was like a reflection in your eye, if I could see her. <laughs> yeah. Chris prefers being behind the camera and therefore I'm in front of the camera. Yeah, and Julie is incredible in the front of the camera. She, she really lights up in front of the camera, so I very much appreciate that. <laughs> Nice. Oh. Good job. Woo. Welcome to Hogan's Lake. That was a doozy. That was a doozy. Good job. Oh. Well, it, it, it really does show in your, your, your film that actually you're having a great time in the wilderness. You're again, you know, we, we talked about you're thriving, not surviving, right? You're, you're enjoying. Which we got from this guy. Oh! Yeah, because. Yeah, Stop it! I think that's such a fantastic message in the sense that you should go out there to enjoy the experiences. And you were the one who summed it up with go out there to thrive, not survive. And I, I couldn't agree more. Wow, okay, but if I hear Uncle yeah. Kevin right now, I'm going to snap. No, no. no. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that was Northern Scavenger, not. All right. Oh. Kevin, I have one question for you. After all the v advice you've given us tonight and all the stories, can we call you Uncle Kev? Oh no, I, I mean, I'm not going to be that old wise man. I, I'm a very young, very sexy man. Why Algonquin? I mean, you do know there's other places to go, right? Well, you have. You, uh, Quebec. 
Man, Man Tromo, the latest one. That's true. Yeah. yeah. But, but Algonquin, big time. Algonquin, big time. Yeah, and you should, you should talk about it. Yeah. So, yeah. so I actually originally got into camping not through family or friends, but through outdoor education. Oh really? Um, yeah. Where, where? Did, you, you, did you go through outdoor ed or? Did... Yeah, like not um, just in high school. Really? Because it's. Yeah. I mean, that's that's another whiskey chat. Outdoor ed in high school. <laughs> like yeah. yeah, remember the days where yeah. we weren't afraid of taking kids out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the program's uh, still running now, um, and um, yeah, Mr. Watson Watson and Betteridge took us all out and taught us how to camp, and um, it was a really great experience. Um, and we went to Algonquin. So then I ended up bringing my dad out and my mom out. So, okay, and we Mr. just went to Wat- Algonquin because that's where we went in Outdoor Ed. And then I brought Chris out. This Mr. <laughs> Watson, is he still around? Yeah. Mr. Watson, look what you've done. <laughs> Trying to go that way. <laughs> now we need a <laughs> We're going the wrong way. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so like it kind of just happened that like this is where I started and um, this is where kind of I got Chris into it and then Chris just... So you never canoe camped or camped before? Oh, wait a minute, this whole channel was, was created, the whole life from Julia. But, <laughs> but I tell you... The first time I took Chris out camping, she'd never canoed before. She'd had experience rowing, never canoed before. We get out, and I'm like, okay, so like I'll probably stern. And she's like, no, no, I want to try sterning. I'm like, okay, whatever. This is she's an never been out of the back of the boat since. <laughs> and it was just perfect from day one. Picked it up like that. Wow. Yeah. So um, why did you? Okay, so you, you didn't go camping, but the first time you did. Yes, you know, because, you know, you, Julia took you out and you're like, this is fantastic. But what clicked? My very first backcountry camping experience was when Julia took us uh, from Canoe Lake up to Burnt Island Lake, I believe. Oh, and that's the great. The second day we went from Burnt Island up to Happy Isle. And we pulled on to Happy Isle at 2 in the afternoon. Not a cloud in the sky. Completely beautiful sunny not a breath of wind anywhere, completely flat calm glass in every direction. We paddled out into the middle of the lake. I looked around and I'd never heard that much silence before in my life. And it was probably one of the most profound experiences of my entire life. And so I was, I was immediately hooked. I, and and that's more or less what I've been searching for uh, ever since. It's just more experiences like that uh, in the backcountry. Because you, you don't get that anywhere else. Nowhere else are you surrounded by that much space without any noise whatsoever, and it's incredible. Wow. Yeah. I, it's that's fun. it. Like The interview's over. <laughs> the meaning of life has just been told. Now, do you still feel that? Do you still get that? Or is there other days where, like, go look, if we film one more time, I'm going to lose it? Yeah, we definitely get some of that as well. And I, I do drive Julia nuts. Tiny girl, big backpack. <laughs> Every now and then we come across a, one of those rare days where it's just it's perfection. It's perfection. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's gorgeous. So why film it then? I mean, here's the thing. So my, my buddy Andy <laughs> every year takes me on a trip, and he just one trip a year, but he tells me not where we're going. I'm not allowed to bring my camera. I can't write about it. And basically it's like, Kevin, you need one trip where there's no reason except the reason. Okay, don't let him know, but I'm peeking. He's blindfolded of me, but I'm getting car sick, so I gotta peek. So, um, do you do that, or do you, do you want to film every single thing? We did it once. You can tell yeah. the story of that. Yeah, so we, I think we were becoming cognizant of the fact that it was, the filming of those trips was sort of encroaching on our experience. Um, and we did a, a backcountry trip uh, without filming it, uh, and we realized afterwards that we really missed having the ability to go back and, and reflect on it and, and have the, the special moments along the way captured. Uh, so that that's a huge mm-hmm. draw for us to film. But having said that, it, it wouldn't surprise me if at some point in the future we do we do film a little bit for our our, our own selves. And in, in fact, on the last day, sorry, on the second last day of our most re- recent trip series, 
we took most of that day off just for us uh mm -hmm. and so yeah yeah but yeah it's funny like the that trip that we didn't film i remember thinking on the trip like this is one of the best trips that we've been on mm -hmm. Yeah. But I can't remember anything. Like, I remember, like, swimming one of the days and, like, going off paddling in the boat, like, on my own one of the days. But I don't actually remember anything else from that trip. And that makes me really sad because I remember that it was good, but I don't remember the moments. Whereas, like, when we rewatch, like, trip videos and stuff, it's like, I just, like, I get all those feelings again. And I, like, I laugh at the jokes again. And I just, I get to relive it. Um, and especially the way that like Chris tells the story because like she doesn't include any of the bad parts So I just like have this beautiful recollection of like it was this perfect trip <laughs> Or like it like we had terrible weather, but we just rose to the occasion and we had a wonderful time There, and it's there like... are some difficult moments in there. We uh, the camera isn't always rolling You know for some of the, the difficult times, but we, we do put some of the difficult moments in It is kick it up <laughs> well, the, the thing is, though, like, it, it, yeah, we all know that there's some difficult moments. I'm just giggling, too, because Christine is right by the camera there, uh, and you're giggling because the same thing. We watch our videos. It's like, one night we'll be going through YouTube. We're like, oh, there's nothing on. Let's watch ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Um, good night. I can't, I can't sleep like this. I can. This is cozy. No. Yes, really, it's cozy. <laughs> this is really cozy. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's true. Like it's almost like watching whole old movies from yeah. you know when you were a kid down in the basement with your you know your. I remember my my uncle having the old camera or the old oh whatever it's called uh, mm. uh, yeah. the yeah to the the two. Film thing rollers and yeah yeah, oh, yeah film yeah. projector oh thank you yeah. okay so why go and and show it all on YouTube then so what's when you're going on a trip yes the the whole silence of of the wilderness is your lure yeah. and you love filming um, why share that with all these people I I think it's probably like most artists in the sense that uh, when you experience something deeply profound like that you feel compelled to share it with the world um, and so I don't know I it, it's probably the thing that I want to share the most in the sense that like I, I think the experiences that you have out there are far more profound we just spotted a bear swimming in the water right there no kidding I mean, like, why would you not want to share that with the world? Uh, and I, I guess you could say that we are drawing in, and all the YouTubers that create that kind of content are probably drawing in more people into the park. But having said that, you know, you still have to have a reservation for a lake. You can't crowd the area without a reservation. Um, and so I think putting that content out there gets people out camping and experiencing things uh, in their own local geographies as well. So I, I, I don't think... Everybody who sees our content is coming to Algonquin Park, and, and, and I do think it is encouraging, or at least helping more people to get out there. Yeah, I would say when I'm watching your videos, I'm not watching it because it's Algonquin. I mean, maybe in the title you're getting more people going into it because it's Algonquin at first. But also, the one, one of the greatest scenes that it would showed your lifestyle is basically um, you guys were at Camp on Crow, Crow Lake, and it, the storm was coming, it was getting late, but you wanted, I think yeah. you were like, I want to hike this ridge yes. to film and, and film amazing scene. <laughs> and I know that yeah. spot too, an amazing scene, right? So you got it. So we narrowly avoided the storm and we're gonna hit the hay. Nah. Oh, look at that, guys. It's incredible. 
Yeah. But we all got it. We're That's watching true. it, and we, we, we're, like, yeah. thankful that you actually did that, yeah. as opposed to just, like, staying in camp at night. Yeah, and we can both say, beyond the shadow of a doubt, that that experience up there with that sunset is the most profoundly wonderful sunset we have ever experienced mm-hmm. in our entire lives. So when you experience something like that, you just can't help but feel compelled to share it with the world because I I feel like what we experience out there makes us better people and if it encourages more people to get outside and experience the outdoors for themselves, uh, all the better. And I'm sure you feel the same way. I feel, I, I think you probably feel as though if you can get more people outdoors experiencing it for themselves, you are making the world a better place. Well, you have to reconnect uh, or get people to reconnect or you just kiss Willens goodbye, right? So when I'm watching your video, because I actually love filming, but I don't have the experience you do, and I'm just like, oh, she got the shot, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. What I'm yeah. always impressed with Chris is that she not only gets the shot, but when I'm watching it, I get the same feeling inside that I got when I was out there. And I think that's really difficult to do. And like... I still don't know how you actually do it, but it's it's impressive. Thanks. I'm grateful. I, I, I think what probably compels me when we're out there filming more than anything is feeling like um, I'm still not portraying how amazing it is out there and so as an artist it keeps you at, like I'm my own worst critic in the sense that I watch my stuff and I think yeah some people might enjoy it but I, I always know that it could be better uh, and and nothing compares to being in the park yourself but if I can get people closer to experiencing that I can hopefully get them on board with experiencing it for themselves I'm a coming for you <laughs> Campsite straight ahead. Having said that, I, I want to know what has been your most... No, this is Whiskey Fireside Chat for you. <laughs> Despite that, I'm going to go ahead and ask, what, what has been the most profoundly life-changing experience that you've had while in the backcountry? I don't know if I can answer that question, because every time I go out is... is I, I think that's what I live for, is my next trip. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've, I've been asked this many, many times. What's my favorite route? I mean, written out in how many guidebooks. What's your favorite canoe trip in Algonquin or Quebec or Clarny or Quetico or Tomogamy? And I'll ramble off some that I actually really like and I'll redo again. Yeah. But it's the next journey. It's the next journey. Yeah. And that sounds really sappy. No. Yeah, no. I like yeah. it. But yeah, but that is it. I mean, well, even like last year I did the Thames River. And everybody, Thames River? Why would you do that? Well, I grew up in southern Ontario. It's like a Huck yeah. Finn feel to it. I want to do that river. Like, what the Go and do your own trip. I can do this. I had forged this from my wilderness surroundings. <laughs> or this year I did the, the Seven River and, and Andy joined me halfway through. I... <laughs> hey, you, you want to go canoeing? <laughs> so all this uh, having been said, what is the next trip for you? This is supposed to be whiskey fireside yeah. chat towards them. Oh, she's just throwing it back at me like... <laughs> Chris is a naturally very curious person. It's really great taking her (laughs) to a party where, say, it's like with my work friends or something and she doesn't know anyone. I remember this one time I brought her. Actually, that was when I was in in school again. I brought you to a school party. You knew no one. Someone started chatting with me and I'm like, oh, geez, like Chris is probably just like standing there, like bored, feeling awkward. I turn around. She's off like chatting it up with a couple other people who she's never met before. I wander over. I start listening and start hearing these stories that I'd never heard before from them. Like she just has this natural ability, this natural curiosity to like get, I don't know, get the most out of people and get these like really brilliant story but that's why you're good behind the camera then right i mean you want to create that that story you don't want to be part of the story you don't want to be the showcase of the story you you want to yeah uh, you know grab it and contain it and and share it right so it 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 does help that i'm i'm a naturally curious person about other people but yeah what 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 is the next trip (laughs) oh no see i thought i'd (laughs) oh what was the question what what is the what is your next trip and why 
I, well, winter is coming. So oh yeah, you have, yeah you you and I have to go hot tenting. We, like you, no, we do. you almost we do. froze to death on your last trip, and <laughs> she didn't tell that to the camera. She made it all beautiful. <laughs> Having a blast. I mean, all this sort of stuff builds character. I wonder what Julie's doing right now. I don't read Cosmo. Not <laughs> terrible. Just it was cold. You almost froze to death. I, w- I was a popsicle. Yeah. yeah. But the question still begs. Oh, what, oh yeah. What, sorry. What is your next? Oh, sorry. Your system. The one thing I would like to do, I don't know about n- this year, maybe next year, is take my daughter across Canada. She hasn't been mm. out west yet, mm. and and uh, that would be kind of cool. I'd love to uh, go back to Lake Superior. Um, see, I'm going to just ramble off different places, right? Uh, I would like to go to a place where I know nothing. I, I when I did the Spay River in Scotland, I loved it because I didn't even know what trees I was paddling by. <laughs> It's pretty strong in it. <laughs> yeah. You got this. Yeah, right? It's pretty strong whiskey. <laughs> to camping. All right, to camping. So it uh, doesn't matter where you go, and I don't know where I'm going. Uh, you love being out there because you, you hear too much silence. And the other question I, I, I'd like to end it with is, so there's Cedar. He's upstairs sleeping. Mm-hmm. Cutest kid. My daughter was like, Oh, I hope he's a cute, cute, cute kid, because if I see this kid with a big head, I can't stand babies with a big head. You he does have a big head, No, he though. doesn't. He's the he cutest. Does. Oh, he's the cutest He's kid like the 85th percentile for head circumference. <laughs> really? <laughs> um, no, that, so you, you, you've had the child out in the woods. We what have. was it like? We have. Oh, <laughs> so I, I don't want to give anything away. Well, yeah, don't tell the whole big story because that, that's, I, yeah. Because but, but what it was like? It's probably, quite possibly, one of the most harrowing experiences we've had in the park. Oh, so. God, don't tell people that. But we did, we've done two trips with Cedar. Mm. Yeah. Um, I didn't know Like backcountry okay. camping trips. So yeah. the, the first trip, which we're so not giving too strong. much of it. Sorry, okay, sorry, Julia. <laughs> so the first one, we had this harrowing experience, which we're not going to Yeah, that's about. a different video. Cut. But Chris convinced me to go back. Yeah. And that trip was, I, I would say camping with a child, much like just life with a child, some of our most stressful moments camping, but also some of our most... Peaceful, enjoyable, like, yeah, some of some of the best and most challenging moments. So maybe, like, again, having a trial out there is changing things, and the anxiety level does go up for sure, because everybody's looking at you, you you're taking a baby out there? <laughs> yeah, that and, like, trying to stop him from eating twigs. It's a challenge. What's wrong with eating twigs? I've eaten twigs all my life. If it's like moose poo, that's not a good thing. Uh, I don't think there's actually that's kind of mushed up twig. So you're all right. Did we go anywhere with this conversation? Um, All right. The very last question is: uh, Where are you going from here? Are you going to continue doing more YouTube? Or like absolutely? Okay. What's what's your plan? Is you're going to change up things? Are you going to get fancier cameras? (laughs) Are you going to get a like a stunt double for Julia and Cedar? No. Uh, so yeah, we uh, we have no uh, we we are going to continue this thing for as long as we enjoy it. Um, so there's still the carrot in front of the horse. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I yeah yeah. And I'm, I'm always hungry to tell the next story. And the grandparents have even agreed to take Cedar for a few days in the spring. Will we do a spring trip? Oh, it's good. Yeah, don't bring a baby in bug season. Yeah. yeah, don't bring me in bug season too. If you invite me on a trip in bug season, there. I'm yeah. I'm staying here with the grandparents for Cedar. Yeah. We'll have a nice mix uh, in the channel coming up of you know like our typical like more portaging and like traveling every day and that kind of thing, yeah. um, mixed in with like camping with our baby and like look how cute he is while we like stay at this campsite for a few days. Yeah, <laughs> and we're always looking for a way to up production values as well. So expect it just to keep. Progression is very important to me, so, yeah. Okay, there's one thing I, I did not know, well, I didn't know a lot about, about you guys, whatever, but I did not know how perfectionist you are, which which now explains <laughs> the quality of, of the videos, like, really. 
Really, like it makes sense, like how much time you put into it. So a lot of people don't know this, and it, you don't really have to know it, to be quite honest. But the amount of time that you have put in to create a quality video to inspire people to go in the wilderness, people yeah. don't know that. Yeah. But this has been going on since the beginning of time. I mean, yeah. nobody knew the amount of work Happy Days <laughs> needed to create oh, yeah. that show. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And we're very much a, a quality over quantity outfit in the sense that... Um, yeah, I, right now there's a trend on YouTube where um, pumping out very long videos with tons of watch time are, you can grow pretty quickly uh, chasing that on YouTube, uh, but we're, we're very much a quality or quantity outfit. And, and, and I, I think that's uh, hand in hand with storytelling in the sense that storytelling is a culmination of brevity and pacing and energy and all those things. Uh, and so those other types of videos are also really good. But they're more at the at the documentation end of the spectrum, uh, and and we we just want to tell the most compelling stories we can while we can keep people's attention out there. So. That's it. That, I, I love that because I think that's why I watch your videos uh, is because I believe in, in, in technology will always advance and we always have had that better cameras, better angles, better this, whatever. Yeah. But if you don't have a story, you don't have a story. Yeah. Right? There's no attention, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. Thank you. Have you, don't, have we left anything out? Like, um, what's your favorite dessert? while being out there oh <laughs> you don't have to ask that question <laughs> Kevin I know I've already made it feel free to smear on as much or as little as you'd like depending on how much you love peanut butter push that down there Really Wasn't good. it so good? Yeah, it is really good. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about peanut butter schmores. Yeah, yeah really actually good. invented yeah. peanut butter schmores, I think, in 2000. Oh, it's in one of our videos. But she invented them on Lake Louisa. Uh, That's around, a beautiful lake. Around. It stopped! <laughs> it's, it's almost like my daughter falling asleep during my stories. <laughs> Dad, you go on for so long. Okay, Chris, what's the worst meal that she's ever made you? Oh... oh. This is Pad Thai, one of the best backpackers pantry meals. Uh, oh, oh! I thought you. I thought you would say never. There was. Like... <laughs> well, she's having to think hard. <laughs> so I, I, I would have to agree. Uh, I, I'm. Oh, that's you're backpedaling. Drawing... Oh no! <laughs> you're doing this right now. <laughs> I, I am drawing a complete blank because Julia is a phenomenal cook. You're well, that and pumpkin spice just makes everything better, right? Sorry, but you just backpedaled. <laughs> there had to be times where you were just like, I wish I had the camera going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the filmmaker in you instantly regrets all the moments that you, you miss that you know would be fantastic. Because if I'm being entirely honest, the most boring videos are the ones where you just go from point A to point B. And as a filmmaker, the most interesting videos are the ones where things go wrong and you have to rise to the occasion to get through those moments mm -hmm. uh, because that's that's just way more fascinating one of my favorite videos on our channel uh, is actually of us climbing uh, the rock slide at Whiteface Mountain um, and it's it's so unfortunate because it's actually one of the videos on our channel with the least number of views like it's one of our, our least unpopular videos but it's actually, I think, one of my personal favorite. I'm so glad we're alive. <laughs> and it's a nice view, too. Mm -hmm. Because things, we, did, we had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. Things more or less went wrong, and we found ourselves just traipsing down through the mountain at some ungodly time of the night. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, not enough just, food, not enough water. Yeah. So why was it not a popular video, then? Um, it's just because of YouTube world that it didn't... I think uh, I think hiking content in You should have been with a dog. You should have uh, wait, wait a minute. Uh, what are the other, other clickbaits? We should have put bushcraft in the title. We bushcraft, put, a we dog. We should have put a, like a blurred out Julia's butt. <laughs> oh my god, like... I forgot about that. That's right. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. That's right. How many views have that got? Like 1.4 million. Sweet Jesus! Yeah. I gotta show my butt. That's basically what you're telling me. Yeah. I, this you're whole really... interview, basically you're saying like, you know, Kevin, it's nice you're visiting, but you gotta show your butt. So have you done videos where you're like, yes, I created magic and then nothing. And then you do something like, well, it's just garbage and Yeah, it's uh, a lot of it's timing. Mm -hmm. Uh... When you mean timing, do you mean, do you post a video on a Friday night or a Monday morning? Uh, I would say Thursdays and Fridays are probably the best time to post. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. 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 But, but that being said, I think also timing, like, I think it's a, it's a bit of a challenge where like, say you want to go fall hiking. Cause that's like this beautiful time of year to go hiking. So you go hiking in the fall, but then like, you know, trying to produce the quality of video that Chris produces, like it takes a little bit of time after you get back. Mm -hmm. So then by the time you get back, you're doing all this other work, you're getting the video out, then it's maybe like November and people are kind of like, I'm done yeah. with fall hiking, yeah. you know? Like, so that's why we often like, we'll do a, like an August camping trip but then we'll hold on to it until the spring and post it in the spring because that's when we know people will be jazzed up so that it's not, you know, by the time you've edited the fifth day of the video, it's December and people are like, yeah. we don't want to watch canoe camping content right but, now. And then that defines the, the, the artist, right? I mean, you show me your office. It is perfect. <laughs> like the cameras are lined up and dusted, okay? I, I think part of my behavior in that regard comes from working for some pretty demanding clients over the years in the sense that... Um, really tight deadlines, really high expectations, demanding a lot of precision in the videos in, in a lot of different regards. And so uh, I, that's, that just became how I create videos. Uh, and so it permeates. Uh, that and you're just also thing. like in every aspect of your life. You're <laughs> like, no, we're going to do this right. Like when we, we did some landscaping in front of our house and I'm like, this is too hard. Let's just like, and she's like, no, we need to like make the line where like the <laughs> between the grass and the garden it's like it has to be perfect and she's like out measuring and like, and now like it looks gorgeous right but like take this outside will you <laughs> we, we do genu genuinely uh, get along really well and I would, we balance each other out yeah and and we are we are best friends in real life so yeah we, we, we I think we see that in the film uh, and, and that's, also, yeah. that's the scary thing too. It's like, well, we all see you on film, whatever. But that, you know, that's your trip. So, it, it, is YouTube uh, sort of like, oh, you know, I want to share this, I want to do this, and then it's, do you actually, like, like for example, um, there's times where I want the wilderness to be all my own. If I do a solo trip, I don't want to share it with everybody. But my desire to share, like, like you, you said. Um, and your willingness to actually share and, and be on film and show your butt. Oh my lord. Hey, there, with the blurring, it was like I was wearing a bathing suit. <laughs> Whatever you makes saw you nothing. Happy. You saw nothing more saw, than it, had I worn a bathing suit. That's, there were many disappointing I, viewers, I, I tell you. I feel like you're talking to your, your parents right now. You're trying to explain yourself. Oh, what did they say about that? You know oh. what? We, we got back from the trip and we were talking about... I think we like mentioned that we did some skinny dipping. And my mom was like, I bet that would get a lot of views. And she was like, actually... <laughs> when we filmed that particular moment in the park uh, on... What was it? Manitou Lake? Mm -hmm. I was just... You had no idea. I was just peacefully shooting uh, the beautiful vista in front of me. And unbeknownst to me, Julia ran by me naked. Seriously? Yeah. yeah. You showgirl! Like <laughs> Look at me! I'm naked! There's a camera! I remember holding on to a pine, looking off to the horizon to see where the smoke is, completely naked, and there was a bunch of girls. Wait, why were you naked in the tree? Oh my <laughs> lord, put that whiskey away! No, it's like Andy. He does the, the gym thing. Uh, uh, he, Andy will get out, he'll skinny it, but he stands around naked around the campsite. Hey, man, how you doing? No, put it away, man. So, sorry, I shouldn't have told that story, but I'm so sorry about doing a whiskey chat. <laughs> anyway, where do we go? For, oh, my Lord. We started off with silence of the wilderness to like your butt and oh, it's gone to hell. All right. I think we're done. I, I, do I have any more questions? Uh, no, but that's strong whiskey. Yes. Oh, I love that's the one. Jeez. Camping. Their channel's amazing. When I say their channel, even though it's her name on it, uh, 
Yeah. And Cedar's going to be involved a lot more. In fact, it's going so to be called Cedar so, Channel. So is this guy's channel? Subscribe oh, to here we go. Channel. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. I know. No, it's really more. Oh. That, that's, that's, that's our Cedar. baby. That's Cedar. That's, that's oh. I, I can turn the volume down no, for a I should, second. I should be quiet. Finish. He's a cute kid. Got a big head. <laughs> Very big. What they're doing is amazing. They're sharing uh, nature. They're um, getting people out there. And cheers to you guys. Oh, cheers, cheers and to you. congratulations on Cedar. The mm. cutest kid in the world. Cheers. Mm. cheers. No, sorry. My child. I, I was going to say, your daughter yeah, is my daughter over there. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> But she's not a baby nor she's 15. She's an alien. <gasps> oh, I got the look. Okay, Cedar. Yep. Okay, yep. We're coming for hey, you. Cedar, we're wrapping up. Bye. Cedar's waking up. All right. Cheers. Oh, my lord. <laughs>